welcome church family and welcome online family to uh, our special Thanksgiving service here at Harmony today. It's a joy to hear from you each week. Um, your words are so encouraging. Um, met a family the other day that just came up and said, uh, we watch you every week. I said, God help you, I pray for you. <laughs> they feel part of this family. And um, thank you, thank you for being so patient and kind. This morning we turn to uh, Joshua chapter 3, kind of coming at you two-pronged today. Uh, as you may or may not have noticed, the sermon title is Get Your Feet Wet. I also want to take, I want to take the foundation of Joshua's life and Joshua crossing the Jordan and getting into the Promised Land. And I also want to incorporate with that um, one of the most beautiful psalms I personally find in, I mean, I love all the psalms. Obviously, half or more of those were written by someone named David. So, I mean, naturally, I just draw, I'm drawn to them. Um, but I, I do love the psalms. One of my favorite psalms is Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Now, that's a foundation by which I want us to share the two avenues of prayer that God has given us, praise and thanksgiving, and I hope to define those so that we understand they are not one and the same. And in the life of Joshua and the crossing of the Jordan River, I hope to be able to apply and make that applicable and relevant to your life this week, right now, as you face thanksgiving. So, uh, al along with the scripture that I read to you, Joshua, in, in uh, Joshua chapter 3, um, oh, let me, let me jump in at about verse 5. Joshua addressed the people, sanctify yourselves, tomorrow God will work miracle wonders among you. Four words, remember. We're going to look at what happened. Remember. Second letter is E, stands for embrace. The third letter is S, and it stands for stand still. And the fourth letter is T, stands for trust. R-E-S-T. And that spells? Something you don't have this morning. Rest. I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. Our society today, if there's one word that would, that with, with coronavirus and panic and, and a seeming cloud hanging over us, the word best summarizing it is unrest. We are a world, a global nation and a global world, especially our own little 330 million people called America, we are unrestful. We are ill at ease. We are living in fear. There's a panic like a pale hanging over our nation right now. So I want to try to bring us through that and help you to tell, take somebody else through that. Now, let's look at Joshua. Let's remember. What happened to Joshua? Well, he gets to the Jordan River, and uh, before he ever got there, 40 years before that, he had been into this promised land. This is why I need you to remember first this morning. Remember that 40 years prior to this, 12 men, 12 spies, went into the promised land. Now, I, I think we miss that sometimes. They didn't go to it. They went in it. They crossed over the Jordan River, and they went into the promised land. They saw Jericho. They saw the walled cities. They saw the Amalekites. They saw the giants. 
All 12 of them. They spent 40 days there. 40 in the Bible is always a number of testing. We just talked about Jesus last week who spent how many days in temptation? 40. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness how long? 40 years. 40 years. So Joshua and Caleb are among the 12. 10 come back. Actually, you need to grasp this this morning. Here's the passion of my heart this morning. I don't know where you are if you're ready to get your feet wet or not. But that's a decision you have to make. I can't make it for you. Are you ready to get your feet wet? Amen. Say, well, Pastor Dave, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, let me see if I can clarify it. They, 40 years before this, they had been in the promised land. They come back, and two of the 12 have a different report. They obviously have the minority report, which ought to tell us something about Washington, D.C. The majority is not always right. Actually, the majority in America is right because the majority is Christian. But we're being pushed aside and dug and put in our graves and taking our Bibles out. Some places now Gideons can't even put Bibles in hotels and motels. Canada has forbidden it by law now. So you want to put God on the back burner? Go ahead. You're going to pay a price for it. So they all 12 saw the same things, experienced the same blessings, ate the same bounty. This is the promised land. Now again, metaphorically, this is a picture of where we're going to be with Jesus. Okay? If you get your feet wet. Now, 40 years they've come back and Joshua and Caleb come back and the report they give is 2 out of 12 saying, it's there. It's full of giants. There's a walled city, but it's ours. And they got voted down. Here's the heartbreak of this pastor and of any pastor. I have a pastor friend here this morning. Any pastor's heart knows this. When you see a generation destroy themselves or not clean the promised land, it breaks your heart. Two million people had come through the Red Sea with Moses. They watched the Chesapeake Bay bank up 75 to 100 feet on both sides with a four mile wide dry dry bed so that the winds blew all night and they could walk across safely. But they forgot God. And this generation that has come in now into the wilderness should have taken two weeks to get into the promised land. They wandered around for 40 years. And the tragedy is that there were 3 million people in that group. A whole generation died in the wilderness because of disobedience. So let's jump ahead now. Let's jump to Joshua and the Jordan. Joshua is called now by God to lead the children of Israel, the new generation, by the way. This is a whole new generation. These are Gen Xers. These are my young couples, like, that are having little babies. It's a whole bunch of young couples with little babies. And, and I'm careful to say this, but because I am one, no grandparents. They died off. Remember what I said? The generation that came in died, in the, died in, the, in the wilderness. So this new generation X or Y or Z or whatever you guys are, you had to take over and train your kids without the benefit of the wisdom of the generation before you. So they get, they get to the Jordan River Now here's the instructions that Joshua was given. Have the priest carry the Ark of the Covenant. Now I'm holding my Bible because this represents the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was about four feet in length and two and a half feet in depth and width. It had four rings on it, a ring on each end. 
and poles went through whereby four men, two on this end and two on this end, could carry the ark. I've got to be careful because he's going to be fussing at me because he's going to say, you got out of range, Pastor. you got to stay in front of the camera. It's all right, Gunner. I'll love you anyway. But this is the ark. Now, in the ark, there are three items. Follow me? Manna, which God had given them to keep them fed in the wilderness. Aaron's rod, which budded. And the Ten Commandments. They had provision. They had power. And they had presence. All within the ark. This represented God. This represents the Holy of Holies. This represents where Jesus dwells where the Holy Spirit dwells. This is the home of God, where we are to make ourselves at home. And this should go before us in everything we do. So God had instructed Joshua to instruct the priest to go first. Now, this may seem like an incidental point, but I, if it's in the Bible, it's there for a reason. Do you know the distance that they had to keep between the Ark of the Covenant and themselves? A half a mile. Two reasons why. One, you don't presume on the presence of God. And secondly, by carrying it a half a mile in front of three million people, everybody could see it. So the priests are out in front. Now, here's where it gets, here's where it gets a little tricky. Joshua says, hey, you guys, you, 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 you see that Jordan River? Oh, yeah, man, piece of cake. Man, in the summer, in the fall, in the winter, you know how, you know how far it is across? A hundred feet. Not much further than from this church over to the parsonage, which is about all I can transverse on a morning, especially at 630 when it's 31 degrees. I'm too old to run, so I have to walk fast. It's 100 feet. Three seasons of the year, it was 100 feet. But the spring season. See, God, I don't know how you all handle this. I don't know if it hits you like it does me. Why didn't God tell them to go in the fall or the winter or the, or the spring? Nothing to it. 100 feet, we'll go across. Big deal. You know what it was in the spring? A mile. If you traverse this road to go back to Bethlehem and up to Easton, it's halfway between here and Bell Creek Road. I measured it. Bill would appreciate that. You couldn't see it from here, a mile up that road because of the bend and the curve. It's past that bend. Now, that's what they're looking at. Not a little, not a little puddle. A mile wide river flowing up most likely to their waist or higher. And Joshua says, hey, you guys that are the ministers, you the clergy guys, you the priest guys, you're going to go to the water. And here's what God told me to tell you. Step in. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks, God. I think I'll wait till the first troop gets through. No, he wanted the clergy. He wanted the priest. He wanted the Ark of the Covenant to lead them across. And you know what happened? If they didn't put their feet in the water and get their feet wet, they'd still be in the desert. Are you seeing a picture here? See, we want God's best, but we don't want to pay the price. We want the blessings which are on the other side, but we don't want to get our feet wet. Because that might cost us something. So the priest, can you just see them? Here's this water flowing. This used to be this little puddle. They throw stones in it, and now it's raging like a river. It's a mile long. And they got to step out in it first with the ark. And you know, they, there's here's three, three million people behind them. They must have been going like, anybody following? Are you all there? Here we go. 
And all of a sudden, the water's parted. See, this isn't like the Red Sea when it had all night to get dry. Instantly, it was clay. Just think about it. It had to be for three million people to get over. Not one of them got their feet wet except the priest. See, if you're going to lead somebody else to Christ or your family to Christ, you've got to get your feet wet. You've got to walk in faith. Now, just a couple of logistics about this. When they got halfway out, Joshua said, yo, clergy boys, seminary boys, you, you brilliant theologians, stop halfway. Well, what's that for? Because I want to see if you mean business. I want to see if you care about your brothers and sisters. I don't want you getting over there first and then bragging about what you did, that you got your feet wet and so God opened it up. See, I don't want it to be about you. I want it to be about Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. I want to know how much you care about your brothers and sisters behind you, all three million of them, so you stop halfway because, there, see, there, there, <laughs> see, there's a spiritual application here. See, God goes before us God is with us in the middle of the battle, and God brings up the rear end. Amen. Amen. Because they had to wait till everybody got across before they could go. So he was in front of them, he was in the middle of them, and he was at the end of them. God's not going to leave you. Amen. You can count on it. His presence will go with you. Well, that was remember. Well, we'll just throw in the others with it. See, you've got to remember what God has done, what he said in, in his covenant to you. You've got to embrace this. It hurts me to tell you this, but I think the latest statistic I read is that 70% of the ministers in the pulpits today do not believe this is the inerrant word of God. Listen, we better embrace this. Amen. This is truth right here. Amen. Infallible, inerrant, wholly inspired by God. Every word dictated by the Holy Spirit. Amen. All 66 books. Amen. Embrace it. Sometimes we've got to do what they had to do. Stand still. There's a passage of scripture that says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You want to know one of the reasons we're, we're, in America we're, we're living with such fear and anxiety? Because we don't have time to stand still to think. We are on treadmills, just running, 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 running to catch up with ourselves. Stand still, and the last is trust. My, my life verse, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge Him and He will make your paths straight. I love how Living Bible says it. Put God first in everything you do and He will crown your efforts with success. <laughs> that, that works for me, Ms. Joni. <laughs> Put God first in everything you do and he will crown your efforts with success. By the way, not the way the world measures it. By this measurement. Mm. Okay, let me give you the conclusion. There are two, two avenues of prayer. Most of us do real well with one of them. Remember Psalm 100? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that he is the Lord our God. He made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, sheep of his pasture. Here's the key. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. 
This is going to alter and change dramatically for the rest of your life, somebody here this morning in your prayer life. Thanksgiving is praising God for what you see and what has happened. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Praise is thanking God before you see what happens. Interesting that he separates them, isn't it? We're real good at Thanksgiving. Especially when they give us a dollar bill, we go to church and they pay us. <laughs> Enter his gates with thanksgiving. See, thanksgiving is, well, oh, I can praise God for what he did this past week. He got me through this, and he got me through that, and he got me through this, and he got me through that. But when it comes to praise, am I willing to step out in the water and get my feet wet? Because I can't see the promised land. But I know if I take the first step and get my feet wet by faith, then I can praise him. In fact, I should praise him before I get my feet wet. In everything, Paul said, didn't he? In everything. He didn't say for. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning the holy people. All the Baptists. And a few of the Methodists. And at the tail end, we'll throw in some Wesleyans. I'm wound this morning. Can't you see that? I love it. Now, that's the introduction. You want the message? <laughs> Praise is thanksgiving before it happens. If you believe the promise, you'll love the plan. Here's my close. Conquering Jericho is secondary to doing the Lord's will. See, it was, and see, the, 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 for us, we're fortunate because we know what happened. It, we're, we're just reading history. We know when they got over there, they walked around six days, one time each, and on the seventh day, seven times. So I've said this before, but if, you're, if you have trichodecophobia, then you need to read Joshua because it'll help you. That's the fear of the number 13. 13 was a number of victory. Six days once, seven on the seventh. God's not bothered by 13. He likes that number. By the way, did you notice how they walked? Quietly. You notice what was in front of them? The ark. And the trumpet blast. And old Joshua said, when I yell, you're surrounding this place. I want you to crash that thing and let the light shine and blow your trumpet and shout to the Lord. And the walls came down. I don't know what walls are around you today, but if you'll start practicing praise, the walls are coming down. Whew. Here's what I want to do. Sandra's going to go to the organ. She's going to start playing a little course. It has three little phrases that they are repetitive. I give all my family to you. I give all my future to you. I give all my problems to you. Here's what the Holy Spirit I felt spoke to me about this morning. All of us need this, starting right here. I can speak for me, so I'm already standing. I want you to just bow your heads. We're going to sing it prayerfully and carefully. If you're at the water's edge and you haven't gotten your feet wet, or you haven't yet learned and, and, and allowed God to take you to the next level from thanksgiving to praise, as we sing, I'm just going to ask you to stand. I don't want you to come forward. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I just want to pray with you before you leave here.
because God wants you to leave in victory. So if, that's, if that represents you, then you just, you say, God, I surrender. I surrender. I'm stepping my feet out in the water by faith, and I'm not just going to give you thanks, but I'm going to praise you for what isn't. What I don't see, but what's coming, you got it covered. I give all my family to you. I give all my family to you. No matter the cost or what others do, I give all my family I give all my problems to you. I give all my problems to you. No matter the cost or what others do, I give all my problems to you. Let me just stop for a moment. I have not looked because I'm not interested in looking just at faces or going home and saying, wow, four people stood, 14 people stood, 54 people stood. No, no, no. God sees you. All I want to know is that you've obeyed him this morning. Because if you take that, it, once you, when you begin to stand, see, that's putting your feet in the water. That's the breaking of your will and surrendering to his will. Now here's the last one. This is the tough one. I give all my future to you. 